Hi, welcome to another OptoPlanner video. Uh, in this one, I'll be talking about employee rostering and specifically about our OptoWeb employee rostering um, web application. So in this application, we're going to assign shifts to employees and we're going to deal with constraints such as making sure that uh, every employee is available when he wants to do his, he, his or her shifts and also making sure that uh, every employee has necessary skills for the department that they're assigned to, right? So um, let's get started. So first of all, let's take a look at the skills, right? So here is we have, we've defined two skills, ambulatory care and critical care. Now, um, in this example, we actually have tenants. So this means for every department, we can have a separate, or for, or for every business, we can have a separate tenant. And you can see here in the tenants, we actually have uh, data sets, generated data sets for a hospital, but also for an, a factory assembly line, or when you're assigning guards to shifts, or when you're assigning uh, people in the help centers to, to shifts, right? So um, in this case, we're dealing with uh, the hospital. So let's assign these uh, nurses and these doctors to these skills, uh, to these shifts, right? So um, here we have two, two skills already. Let me just add one skill more, which is the public relations. And we'll use that in a second, public relations. So this was not in the database yet, right? So now let's take a look at the employees. And you can see uh, we have 98 employees um, and um, they're all named Amy in the first page uh, but uh, they have different last names of course and this is because this is generated data but you can see that uh, depending on the employee they have uh, different skills so for example some uh, employees like Beth Cole here has ambulatory care others might have both skills uh, here Beth Rye have no, has none of the skills right so um, let's look for an employee let's look for flow uh, Jones, right? So here's Flo Jones. And you see he has no skills. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign this new skill which we just created, public relationships, to uh, Flo Jones. So he's the only one who can, has that skill right now. And uh, that will come into account in a minute. So let's take a look at these spots or basically the locations where we need to assign these employees to, right? So uh, we have the anesthetics departments, the cardiology department, the critical care and so forth. And each of these departments requires uh, specific skills. So um, again, this is generated data and you can actually see that here a little bit. Uh, um, the anesthetics department needs the ambul ambul ambulatory care skill, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new skill. I'm going to call it the media center, all right? And I'm going to assign it the public relations skill, which is the uh, skill we just created earlier, right? So now we have the media center, as you can see here, with that public relations skill. Okay, great. Let's take a look at the shift roster, right? And um, these are actually the ones that are all were already uh, assigned. These were already published, right? So actually, the week, so next week, the week of two December is published, as well as the week after that, which you can see here, the week of 9th December. But the week after that is no longer uh, is not yet published. So this first, the next two weeks are actually published. Um, we can still make changes there, but we should do those in a non-disruptive manner, right? Uh, but uh, it's really the week after that, uh, the week of the let me just show you the week of the 16th December that we need to schedule, right? You can see here. We have uh, the, we have this, we have created the shifts already. We have just haven't assigned them yet to people. And we can still create and remove shifts here. So, for example, I can say, oh, the anesthetics department is going to be closed on Monday. So I can actually go here, I can click on the shift, and I can actually just delete the shift, right? So now we no longer have the shift here. Um, I can create new shifts. For example, I can say on Monday, on Tuesday, because we closed the anesthetics department during the night, I expect us to have more people during the day. So let's create a shift there. And as you can see, I've just created a shift there, right? And we'll, of course, need to assign these two people. So for example, to Hugh Watt or, or Hugh Rai J Watt and so forth. Um, earlier, you saw me create it. Uh, the media center. So let's look for let's look for the media center here. Of course, this is a new spot. No, it has no shifts yet. So let me create uh, a shift here on Wednesday. Uh, let's say eight o'clock. All right. Okay. And you can probably already guess who's going to have to do that shift because there's only one person who has the skill to work in the media center, and that's Flo Jones, if you remember, right? So let's see what happens if we now tell OptoPlanner, please assign these. Uh, before we um, let me just do that first. I'll see that uh, it starts assigning these, right? Um, so right now, 
uh, all of the shifts are assigned, no hard constraints are broken, no medium constraints are broken, and it's still improving the soft constraints. You're probably wondering at this point, so what does hard, medium, and soft constraints are? Well, the medium ones are quite simple. That's the number of unassigned shifts. So all of the shifts are assigned, which is exactly what we want, right? Uh, the hard constraints are more important. So make sure that we don't assign two people at the same spot at the same time, for example. Right, so uh, or even at a different spot at the same time. We we just want to make sure that uh, each each uh, employee holds, has only one shift at uh, at the same time. Uh, of course, we have a couple of other hard constraints. So one of them is that skill thing. So for example, you see here, Flo Jones is assigned to that media center. That's a good thing because it is Flo Jones who is the only one who has the skill to actually do that job, right? Um, but there's more hard constraints. For example, uh, if you look at the availability roster, we can see here that um, we have the employees here on the left. We can see that Amy Green is not available on Thursday. You can also see she has no skill on Thursday. So that's a good thing, right? Uh, so you see she has no shift on, on, on Thursday. So that's a good thing. We can see that Amy Fox did not want to work on Thursday. She was available, but she did preferred not to work on that day. Unfortunately, we really needed somebody in the cardiology department at the time. And the best option was to assign it to Amy nonetheless, right? So you can see if we go through these that during the unavailable uh, uh, periods, uh, we don't assign, the shifts do not get assigned to these people. During the yellow periods, we try to avoid that, but as you can see, it sometimes does happen uh, because it needs to be. Now you might wonder, why don't we assign these anesthetic shifts to Amy Green? Uh, probably she doesn't have the skill to do that shift, so we needed to assign it to Amy Cole nonetheless, right? Um, besides this, there's also another constraint uh, going on here, and that's the fact that uh, we cannot have two shifts on the same day. Well, in fact, we cannot have two shifts where between those two shifts there's not a 10-hour break, right? So um, even if uh, you, so if you end up with a late shift, you cannot do the morning shift the next day. And we see that here in, in uh, happening. For example, between this shift and that shift, there's enough hours for this person, for Amy Cole, to go home, get some sleep. Uh, and come back to work, right? So there's at least 10 hours of difference between that. Um, okay, so let's see how we can mess with the system, right? So uh, let's say Amy Jones is not available on Monday, right? So now we're breaking here a hard constraint. I've just added this, right? Um, now, interestingly enough, let's also see what that happens, what that does to do two, two things. Because we had Amy Jones Sunday, uh, Monday and Tuesday working these, the, in the ear nose uh, department, right? So let's see what happens if we schedule this. Um, here we go. There's a, currently there's a hard constraint broken, so the planner actually has to figure out how to deal with that. Uh, it might be that 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 one hard constraint which we saw earlier. So let's see how how it uh, deals with that. Trying to move that away. Hmm. And it was apparently a pretty hard one because it took him longer than uh, just a few seconds. Um, and the interesting thing is because it moved that one shift, it probably had to move the other shift. And it's really a snowball effect that's going on in, in the middle of the schedule, right? We see that here too. If we now jump back to Amy Green, sorry, Amy Jones here, she was unavailable. She still has that ear nose uh, shift on Sunday, but she no longer has it on Monday, of course, but she also no longer has it on Tuesday, right? So there's a side effect there. Uh, why is that? Probably this is now her weekend. And you know, when she has a weekend, you need at least 48 hours off. Um, so um, I'd make, you know, then you cannot say I'm going to have a work one day, one day not, and then work another day, right? because then uh, you don't have a 48 hour rest period. Um, so there's a number of constraints here that play into account uh, and we can add more of course uh, based on uh, the business needs. Um, okay, so let's jump back to the shift roster. Let me show you more, one more thing. Um, here we see, for example, let's take this one. Here we see Gus what? Uh, oh yeah, of course we can move shifts. Right, uh, we can make them longer. So let me just make this shift a little bit longer, All right? Not a problem. Um, I've already shown we can add sh uh, shifts like here. Let's add one, All right? Okay, uh, but what we can also do is we can pin shift. So here we see Gus Watt and Amy Poe po doing, two sh doing uh, these, these two shifts, right? Now, if you actually take the first shift and assign that to Amy Poe, let's look where Amy Poe is, here we go. And if you actually pin that, 
we'll see that this happens, right? So because we do that, now Amy Poe has two shifts in a row. There's no 10 hour break between those two shifts. Of course, we are breaking hard constraints here. You can actually see that in the score to minus 22 uh, points lost. So what we'll do right now is we'll let the planner figure this out, uh, but we're telling him, okay, OptoPlanner really wanted to have Amy Poe in the second shift, uh, what are, but um, we're saying we want to have her in the morning shift, and we're forcing that, uh, right? And we have control, so OptoPlanner has to listen to us. So now if we start scheduling this, you'll see that OptoPlanner leaves Amy Poe in the morning shift, right? as we ordered him, and he figures out to do something with the other shift to make sure that Amy Poe has those 10 hours that she needs. You can see this is now happening. Um, we have now have a schedule where all of the shifts are, uh, are, there's no hard constraints broken. We still have a couple of shifts that are not assigned, but as we give it a few more seconds, uh, it should, it finds a solution for that. And here we go. We no longer have any unassigned shifts. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and if we scroll this, you can see that. And if we go over over any of these shifts, we can also see if we lose any soft points, where do we lose them? So for example, this one, um, we lose a couple of soft points because normally Dan Cole is not working day shifts. His, by default, he's working um, another type of shifts. Okay, now, um, the next thing is, of course, um, Okay, we're ready to publish. We have a great, perfect schedule, right? Um, how long do we, how much do we publish? Well, we publish usually per week, right? So you can actually configure this, but by default we will publish one week. So um, if you go back one week, right, you will see that uh, these are all published, right? This week is published, this week is published, but starting from this week, we don't have, uh, not everything is published. So the Sunday is published, but the Monday is not published yet, right? So Monday 17 is the first day that is not yet published. Uh, so now we're going to publish this, give this to the employees. They'll um, work, you know, work out our social lives based on this information, whether or not they need to work or not. So let's do that. Uh, one thing I also want to show is that we only have uh, two weeks of these where, and then, the, the, and then the, the, there's the, proverbial end of time, right? So you can see Monday, the 31st of December, there are no more shifts. Um, when we publish, we're, we're going to publish one week and we're also going to add one week to the end of the schedule. So we can start scheduling that, right? So let's do that right now. So let me just publish. Okay. So what you see is we've now created shifts here at the end of the schedule based upon the rotation. The rotation is basically the template which we put in here. And you, as you can see, the rotation is that we have a uh, day evening, um, night, and uh, morning shift for each of the uh, departments, right? And we can change that per department. Um, you can also see now if we go back to that uh, 17th of uh, December, let me just switch back to the 17th of December, it is now published, right? So this is the schedule which we now uh, published. Um, okay, that's it. You can see we the gap we, we which created the extra shift that we added. Uh, if you go to the second part, you can see. Um, yeah. And and then of course the, the second week is still uh, un, uh, is not yet published, right? So we published one week. The second week, even though we scheduled it to make sure we did not paint ourselves in a corner in the first week, we did not publish it yet. So we can still make changes here. We can still remove, for example, the shift. Let's leave this shift. Can still create new shifts and so forth. And then we, and if you would schedule, if you put this schedule button, we'll, we'll schedule those. Okay. So um, this is the uh, uh, example. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to know more about this, please go to the website optoplanner.org. Um, and uh, this is open source. You can so you can download this and play with this yourself. Thanks for watching.